Imagine a place free of problems, scams, and thievery. A place where comfort is your only concern. Imagine Comfort Time Live. All right, welcome to Comfort Time Live. Good morning on this absolutely beautiful Friday afternoon. The sun is shining, not too much humidity in the air. We got rid of all the water. Not water, it's water. <laughs> That's been lying around here. Looks like everything's cleared up, so hopefully everyone here made it. But let's put our thoughts out there to the folks up north in the uh, Louisiana area and whatnot that are without homes. And uh, as poor people, it's like it never ends. It's just like you just might as well just, okay, there's a storm. All right, we're going to get flooded. <laughs> So let's put our thoughts out to them. Well, we got a great show we're going to have for you today. We're going to have Doug Smith from Janus Investigations with us. He's going to be talking about all kinds of things. If you are a business owner, you need to be listening to this show today. And if you're working for someone and you're listening, you need to get the business owner to listen. Because we got some stuff that could potentially save them hundreds of thousands of dollars and some really, really good stuff. As you know, Comfort Time Live is heard every Friday at 11.05. You can also watch us and listen to us. So you get to see the incredibly handsome, debonair young man that's going to be with us today. And also Doug is with us, too. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, just mess it. So you get to see us in the studio. You just have to go to ComfortTimeLive.com, all one word, ComfortTimeLive.com. Bottom left-hand side, you go ahead and click on the the little play button there and you'll see the video start playing there's a chat room so if you're a little on the shy side and you don't want to call in at three four zero one five nine zero to ask your question you can chat it in the chat room and we'll go ahead and ask Doug over the air uh, his question now you can also ask questions about anything to do with your home that's what the show is about your home or business we, we try to create comfort and whatever that means, it could be from making sure that your taxes are paid properly to what we're talking about today, such as making sure that uh, your, your employees and your workers' compensation and uh, maybe you have a little fun and you think your spouse or significant other or <laughs> might be uh, going out on Friday nights and not hanging out with the boys <laughs> or the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're going to be talking about that as well. Don't forget our sponsors. You're going to hear them on the break. We have Benjamin Franklin Plumbing here locally in Port St. Lucie. We have Elite Electric. We also have an Elite Electric and Air, which is their air conditioning side of the business. And we're going to be giving away a couple trivia questions today. So we'll give away some great prizes. One of the prizes we're going to give away today <clears throat> is from Doug Smith from Janice Investigations. And for a business owner, if you can win the prize you will get a free background check, which uh, we'll talk about what the uh, dollar value on that is. But uh, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our guest with us today, Doug Smith. Hey, Doug. Good morning, Tom. How Thanks. you doing, buddy? I'm doing well on yourself. Hey, look at me. Could I be doing any better? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you for having us in here. We really appreciate it. We look forward to spending the hour with you. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. We try to have some fun, so keep uh, humor in mind. And, uh, I'm sure I'll make some stupid comments, so by all means, you're more than welcome to, to blast me. I have no problem <laughs> with that. Veronica loves it all the time, so she loves it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, tag, we'll tag team you here today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell me a little bit. How, how did you get into the business of, I mean, what do you call it, private investigation? In yeah, general, we're a private investigative okay. firm. Um, one of those things I never sought out to do it when I was in college. If you would ask me 10 years ago, you're going to own a private investigative firm, I would have go, you're crazy. <laughs> Um, one, I was working for a large logistic firm in Tampa, and we got bought out, and essentially I got laid off and was job hunting. La laid off in, in the United States? That's unheard yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, there was an investigative company that was hiring close to my house. I was living in Tampa at the time, and they needed a video manager to manage their video department. I knew nothing about investigations nor video, but I figured I'd give it a try until I found something else better and got in there about a month or two into it and learned the vernacular and some of the ins and outs of the business and a couple investigators took me under the wing and really showed me the ropes and I come from more of a business side so I was very good at managing the product and keeping the the clients updated and I really enjoyed it 
So I worked for the firm and we grew pretty large in about the six, seven years I was there and really got into the workers comp end of it. And I was managing investigators from California to Puerto Rico. Wow. And eventually my wife and I, we have two young kids and I'm from the area. I'm from Hope Sound and her family's on Hutchison Island. We decided it was time to start our own business and move back. And Great. here I am today. <laughs> Now, what, what part does she have in the business with you, besides being the head cheese? Oh, yeah. She's the brains of the operation, <laughs> for sure. Erin uh, really does a lot of she's, does a lot of the marketing and, and, of course, the managing end of it. But she's really good at going out and meeting and greeting the clients and, right. and, and getting them on board with us. So she's a tremendous, tremendous asset so to our company. So she's the big point of contact. Now, you, yes. you have some very, very new little ones. Yes. I have a one-year-old daughter, Rayleigh. And a three and a half year old son, Eli. Yeah, so boy, they're, they're still keeping you up? No, they're just running us wild. <laughs> my, my little boy, he's all boy, so he's, you know, 12 hours a day of nonstop action. And, and Rayleigh just started walking, so she goes in one direction, he goes in the other. So <laughs> certainly never a dull moment in our house. Awesome. <laughs> that is great. Well, okay, well, now what, what types of businesses? I know you mentioned just workers' compensation mm -hmm. right now. What other types of strategies do you focus on in your business? Well, we go after any business that hires employees, number one, because we do the pre-employment screening or the background check. So anybody that has employees out there as a potential client or somebody we would love to talk to and give you advice about maybe what you're already running, what maybe you could do better, or if you're not doing it, how to get started. Uh, number two, the investigation portion, which falls under the workers' comp uh, realm like the construction industry, that's a big target for us where people will be having injuries on the job. And not all of them are fraudulent, but if they do become fraudulent, we would love to advise you on how y your company working with your risk manager or your adjuster should be handling these fraudulent claims so they don't carry on for two or three years and then drive your mod rates to the roof. Right. And the last part of the business, since we do process serving, is we target attorneys, obviously. But for our purposes today, we don't really need to get into the okay. process serving. But that's the third part of our business. But our two main parts, like I said, are the uh, pre-employment screening and then the investigation portion. Well, that, that's actually kind of one of the biggest reasons that Comfort Time Live is, is on the air is that the, the two words synonymous with each other are contractor and fraud. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's kind of one of the biggest reasons that, you know, we started this show is, is because you have a lot of fraud internally and but also the contractors themselves mm -hmm. as well as the employees that work for them and that's one of the biggest reasons that you know we we say unlicensed contractors and less than honest contractors that's who we go out with and, and i tell you it's i i say it's a 3.2 billion dollar a year industry wow. um between the, the the contractors that are stealing the employees that are stealing because mm -hmm. you, you're not only the unlicensed guys are not only hurting the client they're also hurting the licensed guy that could have done the work Certainly. So it's almost a double whammy. Gotcha. Uh, and then you got the guys in the moonlighting. So, uh, you know, has anybody ever asked you to, a contractor ever asked you to do an investigation against an employee who they thought might have been uh, moonlighting? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I haven't, that hasn't come my way, but I'm sure it will. I'm yeah, sure that it might will. be an end of the business mm -hmm. to look into because I, I know when I had my company, uh, mm -hmm. I had it, and it took me a while to figure it out. Um, it took me a while to finally catch the guy. You know, he was... You know, he was being pretty slick about it, but I found out that, you know, you find out that he's going out to a customer's home, and he would use the price book that we had, and then if the customer would squawk at it, he would say, well, hey, I can do it on the side. I'll come back tonight. And gotcha. so it just, it just, just was a pattern of why why are we losing mm -hmm. some of these clients, and it didn't seem right. So uh, I think that might be Oh, that'd be right up our alley. Yeah, that'd be yeah. right up your guys' alley. Definitely. So, now, you talk about pre-employment screening. We're, we're big on that as well. Um why, what is the importance, first off, to the contractor for pre-employment screening? Well, number one, you, you want to know who's working for you. You know, what, what, what well, his name's Joe. Joe Smith, I know, I know <laughs> who he is. He's a great guy. Yeah, we get that a lot. I knew his cousin worked for me for 20 years. <laughs> but unfortunately, a lot of times, especially in the state of Florida, you don't know where people are, are actually coming from. Okay. You know, they may be coming Up north. From, yeah, <laughs> they may be coming from New York, <laughs> California, and they might have had some offenses in other states that right. could possibly be a li liability to not only your your company but your clients and even your own employees. Right. Um, so I I feel it's very important 
to conduct the background check on the potential employee from obviously from the criminal standpoint, right. get that out in the open. If they've had previous, you know, tile thefts and copper wire thefts, you don't want them on your job site because you're losing money right then and there. Maybe they've assaulted people and you don't want them assaulting your employees or your clients, obviously. But it's important not just to do a local, it's important that you yes, want to do Yes, you national. want to expand it nationally. A lot of people, and you can, I'm not knocking the FDLE report, you can go online, anybody can do it for $25, but it's only going to cover the state of Florida. And okay. so many people, as we know, come from other states in Florida. So you want to go nationally. I always tell people, especially in the, in the construction industry, you we can run a, a worker's comp index to see if they've had any prior claims. It's not going to show me that they were fraudulent claims, right? but if a guy's had four or five back claims, yeah, you might not want them digging trenches for you. You know, yeah, and it also gives you an inside scoop that you can ask them, you know, have you, have you had any uh, injuries or whatnot? Uh, is that mm -hmm. something legally that you can ask somebody? Yes. You yes. can, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're not supposed oh. to ask if they're married. You're not supposed to ask if they have kids. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to ask, you know, ask certain things. Yeah. But Most job applications will have, have you ever been arrested? Yes or no. Have you ever been convicted? Yes or no. Have you had any prior workers' comp claims? Okay. Yes or no. So that's a question you can ask. That'd be a big red flag right there when you know they've gotten three or four. Yeah, definitely. You definitely, and you don't want to, I mean, everybody needs a job in this economy. I'm not trying to, you know, deter people from hiring people. But if a guy's had a bad back, again, you don't want to put him in a position where you're going to aggravate that, put him out of work, drive your rates again through the roof. So, f you know. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about rates and stuff like that because that, that is a killer. Yeah. Uh, that is an absolute killer. And we basically say, you know, it sets a precedent when you're, as a business owner, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that don't run the background checks. And I'm sure people t tell their friends, hey, they don't run background checks, so go apply for ABC roofing. Yep. And before you know it, the uh, inmates could be running the asylum there for you. And, and you know, if, if you, and you probably know this answer, the, the, two, uh, the two or three biggest trades taught in prison. One of them's air conditioning. Huh. Didn't know that. Yeah. It's air conditioning. I think plumbing is one of the other ones. Oh, that's but, interesting. Uh, yeah, one of the biggest trades taught. Uh, yeah. And it's – so where are a lot of your employees going to come from? You know, I was teaching for a very short period of time uh, over at uh, a local facility here. And one of the guys in the class had so many DUIs that he lost his license for his entire life, had been in and out of jail – multiple times got some grant for twenty thousand dollars to take this hvac class and i guarantee you he's going to get a job working for somebody because probably 70 percent 80 70 to 80 percent you correct me on the number because you probably know better than i do what percentage of companies don't do background checks oh i'd say you're right on there about 60 or 70 yeah because well we think of this whose car is he going to be driving to those jobs yep. the owner of the company yes yep. And, yeah. and he used to get somebody to drive him to the classes, but you, you know it's going to be difficult when he goes to start looking for jobs, mm -hmm. and people say, well, you can't work because you can't drive. Well, eventually he's going to... Well, he's not going to say he can't drive. Yeah, exactly. He's going to mm -hmm. eventually start saying that, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. um, or he'll, somebody, he'll hire some kid to drive him, you know, but he's not going to get a job in the construction industry doing what he does if he can't drive. You have to be able to drive. Yep. And he had five DUIs. Five. It's amazing. You know... <laughs> And plus, obviously, when you're on the DUI, you don't obviously after a couple of times, you don't have your license to begin you don't with. Have it, yeah. So, but yeah, I guarantee you, it, especially mm -hmm. in this town, I know tons of companies in this town that don't do background checks. No. And and I've I, and that's one of the big things that that I try to when I bring sponsors on here. I want to see what you do. I want to mm -hmm. know that you're doing background checks and driver's license checks. And, you know, if you pull the wool over my eyes and I bring you on as a sponsor, but I eventually find out later on down the road, goodbye. You know, yeah. Goodbye. Don't blame you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we've got some more, more questions on the pre-screening, but we're going to take our first quick break and listen to some of our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to dabble in a little bit more into the workers' compensation and pre-screening. You're ta listening to Doug Smith on Comfort Time Live. We'll be right back. We can do it. Elite Electric. There's nothing to it. Elite Electric. Ooh, amazing. Elite Electric. Woogie, 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 woogie. Elite. 
Fleet Electric specializes in all of your electrical needs, from security lighting to surge protection and everything in between. How do you think they got their name? Elite Electric. Elite Electric has been family owned and operated on the Treasure Coast since 1988 and they're recommended by Comfort Time Live. Visit online at EliteElectricAndAir.com and learn more about their services. Elite Electric, service today. Proud sponsor of Comfort Time Live Friday mornings at 11 on WPSL 1590. No matter what you want, just pick up your phone, say, come on, Elite. It'll get the job done. We can do it. Elite Electric. There's nothing to it. Elite Electric. Benjamin. Franklin Plumbing would like to help you schedule some help, whatever on-time help you need. For plumbing emergencies like a busted water heater, go to schedulesomehelp.com. Sewage problems? Schedulesomehelp.com. If water is dripping from your ceiling, schedulesomehelp.com. If you need help repairing that leaky faucet or upgrading your showerhead, schedulesomehelp.com. Want help with your golf game? Yep, schedulesomehelp.com. Right now, get help for $25 at schedulesomehelp.com. Limitations and exclusions apply. See schedulesomehelp.com for full detail. Known for helping you keep that spark, now they'll help you keep cool. Elite Electric and Air, the official air conditioning sponsor of Comfort Time Live, has provided the best in heating and cooling customer service since 1988. If your electric bill is costing you more than 12 cents per square foot under air, you may be overpaying the utility company. Elite Electric and Air can help put that cash back in your pocket. Call Elite Electric and Air with 24 hours service. Dial 340-3797. That's 340-3797. All right. Welcome back to Comfort Time Live. I'm Tom and we're speaking with Doug Smith from Janus Investigations talking about how to protect your business. Talk about how to find those employees that may not be the best fit for your company because we know that you know the, the business owner goes and gets his license and does all the right things but he has to hire people if he wants to grow his business well we do the best job we can or we think we can in order to hire those people mm -hmm. to make sure that they are the best representation of us and then we send them out in the world and we say represent me i'm with what i've taught you but that is who we are not the guy sitting not the guy sitting behind the mm -hmm. license and that's where I think the importance of your pre-employment screening, you know, I, I strongly believe in interviewing somebody two or three times before you hire them. And in that, pro that. In that process, the pre-screening should be taking place a little at a time. Definitely, definitely. And let me just say something out there to the, especially the business owners that may be listening. And especially for AC businesses that are putting service repairmen in an existing occupied residence or the pool cleaning industry or lawn care, you really want to cover your asset, you know, when you're sending your workers into someone else's home. And you want to obviously you know what's in their background for that. Right. But I always tell people, and it's a, it's a statistic and it's mind-boggling, when you run the background check on somebody, you've done your due diligence. When you run it legitly through an investigation company or if you go through your payroll company, the nature HR company, mm -hmm. and then they'll typically feed it back to an investigator. I mean, I, I can't use the background check program on my iPhone? Yeah, the 1-800 background is, <laughs> is not legit. It's called, again, it's called doing your due diligence. And say the AC company, servicemen, steal something from a house and the homeowner comes to you says i'm suing you i've got a lawyer you did you ever background check that person and you say yes i did you provided it they'll probably subpoena me i'll come out and say yes we did do the background check you've covered yourself okay especially if they've done something after the background check was ran you've you, you've covered yourself you've right. done your due diligence now if you fail to do that you fail to do that and you get brought to court you're going to lose your case 80 percent of the time 80% of the time, which to me, it's just mind boggling. And on average, the average cost to you on those cases will be $1 million. Wow. Now I know in my small business, that'll wipe me out. And a lot of people that I know in this community are small business owners that would wipe them out. So we have a saying at Janice is, you know, don't let one bad hire collapse your empire for the cost of $40 on average to run the background check. 
you're going to save yourself. Ounce prevention worth a pound of cure. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's yes. just over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got crazy stuff on, you know, like on your iPhones, this, this, this crazy thing. You ever heard of that? No. Been verified? No, no, I haven't seen that one, but I see it, a lot of 1-800 background. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's, a, it's a cheesy and, little iPhone mm -hmm. thing, and, mm -hmm. you know, for... For a cheap amount of money, you put your. But it's it, this is the kind of crazy stuff that somebody would use. Oh, a lot of people do. Yeah, uh, it, to just it's insane. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They're not going to find anything. But sometimes I think it's complacency that people. It, it's like they, if they can pull something up that's classified as a background check, they feel comfortable that they've done something better than nothing, regardless mm -hmm. of what it shows. Yeah. Oh, I pulled a background check. Well, where was it? Well, it was just for the St. Lucie County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I pulled one. <laughs> right. And again, you know, I will not, not, if you are smart enough to do that and just make sure the guy hasn't been arrested in the last 30 days, Yeah. that's great. But like we were saying before, as us being a licensed investigative firm, I've got my hands on databases that the average person can't have. Yeah. And that's where we can pull background checks from every state, you know, in, right. in the United States. Plus, I also have... Um, if I need someone to be checked out in Puerto Rico, I have a couple investigators. It's a different uh, entity down there. They've got right. to go police municipality to police me. It takes a while, but if there's a concern, we can cover Puerto Rico as well. Uh -huh. So uh, that's good. That's yeah. real good. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. on, on the background checks, and we're we're gonna. This is a question that that I had asked, and we're still gonna we're gonna dabble into this question. Um, we got to talk to a couple of attorneys to find out. You know, we're real big on this show talking about. If you ask for something and the contractor tells you, ask for validation. I want to see something writing. Are you licensed? Yes. Show me your license. Are you insured? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have your worker's compensation? Yes. Show me, show me the paper. Show me the one that's up to date. Well, the one question that came up that we're going to dig into is if, you, if the homeowner can ask the question, are these people background checked? Business owner says yes. We are going now to find out, can the homeowner ask or demand for proof of that background check? And and, and in what what level can they ask? And we're going to find that out. Now, now Doug was mentioning maybe something along the lines of just an affidavit say, stating from the, home, for the business owner that he signs it, notarizes it, saying that, yes, all of my people have been background checked. And that could be used as a documentation of court of law if, you know, uh, Fernando or Jose or Joe right. or whoever walks into the house and ends up robbing this customer blind. And you find out, well, this guy never pulled a background mm -hmm. check. He signed this stating that he pulled a background check. Well, now all the liabilities mm -hmm. on that business owner. Right. Um, especially when you come to find out that they, you know, that person ended up robbing banks and stuff like that. <laughs> in some other, you know, in some other state. But yeah, it's a great question, and I, I I put a couple of feelers out to some attorneys in the area that I've done some employment um, law with, and I kind of spun a couple of their heads. And as soon as I get that information back, I will share it with you. And I know you have a couple of feelers out. With oh, absolutely, your yeah. I that, I think that's great because, like I said, I I just really I'm real big on visual, you know. Because yeah. I, I mean, we we've had people call in here all the time saying, "Well, the guy said he was going to pull a permit." Mm -hmm. Never pulled. I I know contractors all the time. They check it off on the box. In fact, I was in a customer's house last week who called Comfort Time Live, because what I do is I, I go out to their houses and I also help them verify information from contractors that have been out to their house. Third party, independent, just a flat fee. So I'm not making any money uh, off of the, what I tell them. Mm -hmm. um, but I validate what some of these other companies do. So you see somebody check off a box that says pulling a permit, but you don't see half of the things that need to be done to bring the unit up to code. Right. that would be required for the permit. So you know that it's going to fail inspection. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to fail inspection, you know the guy's probably not pulling a permit to begin with. So it's insane. So it is. validation. Ask to see everything. Ask to see the worker's compensation. Make sure that it's up to date. But we'll get you an answer on the the uh, background yeah, that's check. That's a great question. It's a very great yeah, question. Yeah, I think, I think that'd be good for the homeowners. Really good, good. So we got pre-employment screening, which we know is very, very important for homeowners. Um, now, we look at the worker's compensation. Workers' compensation is probably, I would say, one of the top three issues with small businesses. Definitely. Um, one, because of cost. Yep. Um, and two, uh, if you're an unlicensed contractor, you can't get workers' compensation 
nor can you get liability insurance and whatnot because right. you're not licensed in that business. So that is a huge reason as to why unlicensed contractors can be less expensive because workers' compensation, mm -hmm. especially for a new guy starting out, is huge. Right. Huge. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Now, what, what kind of things go into understanding a workers' compensation? As far as the claims process, once it happens? Well, or? you talked about modify rates. Mm -hmm. um, a modify rate is has a lot to do with the experience level, mm -hmm. uh, the position of the person, um, and things of that nature, correct? Correct. And, uh, you know, do they do their OSHA training and all that stuff? Okay. That can give you a reduction on the mod modified right. rate. Um, and... So we have the workers' compensation in the company, and, and that's there to protect the company if that employee gets injured. Correct. Okay. Now, you talked about things that employers should do when it comes to worker compensation mm -hmm. to protect themselves. Now, beforehand, as well as after an injury. Yes. Let, let's talk about the stuff beforehand. What are, well, again, beforehand, when you run a background check, you, you want to make sure the company that's doing it can do the the what we call the workers comp index to see if okay. there's any prior claims out there number one so you right. know so if the guys if the guys like you said the guys hurt his back four times at previous employers that sends up a red flag for you to start asking probably some questions there's going to be a liability for you down yeah. the road whether it's uh, legit or illegitimate claims in no matter what it's still going to cost you a little bit of money after the claim occurs and let me just put this out there too i don't i don't like to be mr paranoia there's a lot of paranoia in my industry most claims are legit, and that's why we have workers' comp. It's just like car insurance. That's right. why we have it, but unfortunately, there's fraud committed in both ends of it. Uh, a lot of times, and when I'm out in the community and I'm talking to contractors and business owners that deal with it, they pay their insurance, and the claim happens, and either they fill out the paperwork or their HR department, and they send it off to the adjuster. And like most worlds, you think they're doing their job and have your best interest in hand. And like any industry, there's great adjusters and there's some that are just move at a snail's pace. So I educate people, especially when they, being in the local area, you kind of have a good feeling of what may be going on behind the scenes. Hey, this guy's out surfing and he says he's got his, you know, hurt back or he's working across town for another guy on why I'm paying his workers comp. So I, I educate the people as soon as the accident occurs, even if it's legit, get a recorded statement tell your call your insurance company i had an accident report it either the adjuster will come out and do the recorded statement or they'll farm it to a company like myself in there if they can't get to it and it's very important number one you want to get the claimant statement obviously number two any witnesses that saw it any co-workers maybe the if they're building a pool in the homeowner's backyard and they saw the guy fall in the pool right. get everybody's statement even the first reporting <clears throat> Uh, person of your office, whether it's you as the business owner or if you have an HR department that it's going to deal with getting the person to the hospital and then, then deal with getting all the information in the insurance. You want to get all that and get it all done and documented because down the road that can be a tool to help cover your, your, your liability. Yeah. And when I say that is, the guy might say, oh, I'm, I'm going back to work, I'm fine on tape. But three months later, open up the claim on this injury, and then you have this recorded statement saying, hey, no, you said you were fine. You were going back to work. The doctors um, now, approved that, you going back to work. Is that a verbal statement recorder, or are we just talking uh, written? It would be verbal. Most, and, most and times we do, is, do that? Yeah, well, you, we you get a consent form from okay. the guy, and he okay. signs off. To, I'm giving okay. you this. So, yes, it's all signed and sealed, basically. Okay. And another issue I always talk to the owners about is if you have your SOP, you know, your standard operating procedures, if you guys are working on roofs, they're supposed to wear back braces or whatever the safety equipment is, we always ask that. Well, what are you wearing your brace? Should you be working in the rain? And if it becomes where I as an interviewer see it's going wrong, I'll pull out the book and say, well, when you work on a roof, you're not supposed to work in the rain. Is that correct? Yes or no? And they'll say, well, yes, but I try to get the job done. Okay, I understand, you know, I understand yeah. you're a worker. I'm a worker too. But those are the things that eventually will help the, 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 the business owner down the, down the road. Get it right away. Just, it's a quick, I mean, a couple hundred bucks to get them. It's great. You cover your, your CYA, as we all yeah. know what that means. So that guy would have been better off saying my boss made me work in the rain. 
Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. He made me. He made I tried me. to get he out of it. The job yeah. had to be done. Yeah. yeah. And now the boss is like, "Why the hell are you? Whoa. You turn the tables on me." <laughs> and then there's another component a lot of people aren't aware of. If the you know Monday morning claims are huge, or I see a lot in the construction industry. They know the project's over. Yeah. They hear, "Oh, the project's going to be done in two weeks." Claims go through the roof. I mean, they just do. They spike. And one thing I always tell, and I even talk to adjusters about this is you want, especially Monday morning, say the guy comes in within an hour, he mysteriously falls off an 18 inch step and he's just in contraction, needs a helicopter lift to Jackson Memorial. I, I tell people, even the adjuster or even the, the business owner, ask them if they did a hospital sweep. And what that entails is we'll run a radius of where the guy lives, yeah. like 70, 100 miles, and we'll call the major hospitals, emergency room, and say, have you seen Joe Smith? Uh, yeah, we saw him. Sunday, October See, that's, 7th. That's slick. Yeah. That is slick. And then we'll get that information. They won't give me the record, but I'll go back to the you or your attorney or the, the a carrier's attorney and say, we've got a hit, and I think it might match up around this injury. They will in turn subpoena the record and show that Joe Smith came in Sunday before his Monday accident and wrenched his back playing beer league softball <laughs> you know and then they can get in there and hammer him in a mediation yeah. and go this is the information and nine times out of ten will that make the claim go away it might scare the guy off he might drop it but if not it's going to reduce it yeah. definitely 10 20 thousand depending on what the claim is so it's a big tool a lot of people aren't aware of that and then of course the last resort is especially i see it here locally when i talk to people oh i needed you three years ago i needed you four years ago i had a guy who was out for years but he was out at the causeway throwing his 12-foot cast net all the time, is their surveillance component. Go out and see what they're up to, how active they are. And again, do we always get it where we totally reduce the claim to zero where it's total insurance fraud? No, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. But again, we get a guy who's active, you know, two or three days out of the four days we work him, bending and twisting, doing things that his doctor and him say he cannot do, bring that video to mediation and watch his attorney squirm and go, oh man, you weren't, you didn't listen to one word I said. And again, we can get that reduced for you. You get all dressed up in like the fake mustache and the, the long trench coat oh, with the hat and glasses. The fake tree and move real <laughs> slow, like in the cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. That's the fun part about the business sometimes is you really get to, I know a lot of investigators and that really love the get in different roles to to do what they do it's, yeah it's very interesting in that sense i can imagine now and on all these problems that you're talking about that these people are being fraudulent from in the long run that just causes workers compensation to increase for everybody else mm -hmm. you know yeah. one bad apple spoils the whole bunch and these mod five rates the modifier rates basically what they are is <clears throat> each individual like when i started my company I got a reduced modify rate because of my experience in the business, but also because the business was 18 years old already, mm -hmm. and I was just buying an existing company. Mm -hmm. If I had not, I would have been two to three hundred percent higher, right? Because I was starting out fresh. So that's what's very difficult for some of these new businesses, mm -hmm. and it, it hurts them because as a single business owner, I don't have to have workers' compensation in the state of Florida, correct? Yeah. So, but the minute I hire somebody. I get nailed with workers' comp. I have to have workers' comp. And right there, that, that, that takes my, I mean, for, for every dollar an employee is paid, most companies pay another $2.50 behind that for workers' compensation, liability insurances, vacations. Mm -hmm. Most employees don't yep. realize mm -hmm. that. So for every dollar, I'm actually spending $3.50 because of all that. And it just, and every year it's just something else goes up and goes, and then if you have any accidents, at your business, it goes up even more. Right, and then the bottom line is you have to recoup that money, so you pass that on the consumers now yep. paying the bill. Exactly. And, that's and then the unlicensed guy comes in who doesn't worry about workers' compensation, doesn't worry about per per permits, and he's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars less. Well, yeah, all day long he can. Right. But the homeowner's not going to realize that until somebody slips and falls at their house, and then they get sued. Exactly. And and I I hear people all the time. There was a lady that called here on the show that uh, a, an unlicensed guy came in. He hired somebody else, his buddy. His buddy slipped and foot fell and sued her. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. But 
it's happening by a tenfold yeah. across the country right now as we speak. <laughs> it's insane. That's why that's why we're doing Cover Time Live. So don't forget, 340-1590, the number to call here. We're going to do a, tri- a, a quick trivia question before we go to our break. And if you are a business owner and you win, we're going to give you a free background check from Janus Investigations. If you are not a business owner or cannot provide that prize to somebody you work with or for, uh, we're going to give you one of the prizes from one of our sponsors, Benjamin Franklin Plumbing, Elite Electric, or Elite Electric and Air. And I'm going to let you pick which one you want. Either a one-time free air conditioning tune-up, a whole house plumbing inspection, or a whole house electrical inspection. It's your choice. So you're going to give the, the, the first person to call at 340-1590 with the answer to this question will be the winner. The question, the blue-tongued lizard, the chow-chow dog, and the black bear all have what in common? A, their skin is totally black. B, their tongues are blue. Or C, all have originated from China. Once again, the blue-tongued lizard, the chow-chow dog, and the black bear all have what in common? A, their skin is totally black. B, their tongues are blue. Or C, all have originated from China. 340-1590. We're going to take a quick break, but if you're the first caller to get that right, we got all kinds of possibilities for prizes. You're listening to Janice Investigations on Comfort Tom Live. We'll be right back. Electric. We can do it. Elite Electric. There's nothing to it. Elite Electric. Ooh, amazing. Elite Electric. Elite Electric specializes in all of your electrical needs, from security lighting to surge protection and everything in between. How do you think they got their name? Elite Electric. Elite Electric has been family owned and operated on the Treasure Coast since 1988, and they're recommended by Comfort Time Live. Visit online at EliteElectricAndAir.com and learn more about their services. Elite Electric, service today. Proud sponsor of Comfort Time Live Friday mornings at 11 on WPSL 1590. No matter what you want, just pick up your phone and say, come on, Elite. And we'll get the job done. We can do it. Elite Electric. Benjamin Franklin Plumbing would like to help you schedule some help, whatever on-time help you need. For plumbing emergencies like a busted water heater, go to schedulesomehelp.com. Sewage problems? Schedulesomehelp.com. If water is dripping from your ceiling, schedulesomehelp.com. If you need help repairing that leaky faucet or upgrading your shower head, schedulesomehelp.com. Want help with your golf game? Yep. Schedulesomehelp.com. Right now, get help for $25 at schedulesomehelp.com. Limitations and exclusions apply. See schedulesomehelp.com for full details. Known for helping you keep that spark, now they'll help you keep cool. Elite Electric and Air, the official air conditioning sponsor of Comfort Time Live, has provided the best in heating and cooling customer service since 1988. If your electric bill is costing you more than 12 cents per square foot under air, you may be overpaying the utility company. Elite Electric and Air can help put that cash back in your pocket. Call Elite Electric and Air with 24-hour service. Dial 340-3797. That's 340-3797. All right. Welcome back to Comfort Time Live. We have Janice Investigation with us today, Mr. Doug Smith, owner. And we're talking about all kinds of things dealing with workers' compensation, um, pre-employment screening, and all kinds of other stuff. But uh, You got a uh, trivia question out there. Yeah. You want to repeat that question? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the trivia question for the day is the blue tongue lizard, the chow chow dog, and the black bear all have what in common? A, their skin is totally black. B, their tongues are blue. Or C, all have originated from China. And we're going to go to the phone lines. We have Bill who thinks he's got a good guess. Hey, Bill. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good, sir. How about yourself? Oh, very well. So you think you got the answer, Bill? 
there you go. You know, it's kind of funny. It's almost obvious that one, but you think to yourself, you think to yourself, nah, that's too simple. It can't be that one. <laughs> well, great, Bill. Great. Now, now, let me ask Bill, are you a business owner? Yes, I am. You are. So could you use the free background check? Uh, yes, at some time, at some point in time, I don't have to use it right away, do I? No, no, absolutely no. not. No. Um, we'd be more than happy to. I mean, do you think you'll be hiring anybody in the next year or two? Yeah, God, God I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if not, you need to co- hire me for the consulting services so I can help your business grow. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, that's it. All right, well, great, Bill. Well, what we'll go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to pass this on. i got Doug sitting right here, and Doug will contact you, and then you guys can kind of exchange information so that when the time's right, or maybe that there's something else that Doug might be able to offer, depending on your type of business, that you might be able to use right away. Okay. Well, hey, Bill, I appreciate you listening. Thank you very much. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, sir. Have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, see, we got some business owners listening. Good. So, this is a That's good great. show. Good show, good topic. Uh, I would like to hear that. Now, um, just kind of off, off, off a different note, this is one that I've been just kind of, <laughs> just itching itching to talk to you about we're not going to spend too much time on it is the surveillance for and correct me how you say it but i'm saying cheating significant other spouses but what do you call it in your business uh we call it the, the domestic surveillance domestic if surveillance you will. i like that Domest- <laughs> that's that's very politically correct yeah. <laughs> and it's funny you you asked me that because when we show up not just my firm any investigative firm the first thing people say, well, what are you doing at TCBA? Or what are you doing at the Hope Sound Chamber or the Stewart or the Fort Pierce? Where nobody's cheating in here. Well, that's not all we do. Right. But it but it is out there. Uh, a lot of firms do no, a lot of nobody. Maybe you need to do a background check before you get married or before you make a commitment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like exactly. It's yeah, exactly. Cool. Is there a documentation for yeah, domestic you got, you know, I'm sorry. I have to, you want to ask me out on a date? Sorry, i got to check you out first. Yeah. <laughs> got to call Janice first. You know what? Run a I bet you check. there's people that do that, too. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised, especially people that are now – single in their 50s but have some yeah. money and something mm-hmm. oh, yeah. they will they will be very interested on this person they were dating oh wow that's funny yeah so i mean what's what's kind of your process that you go through with stuff like that well with, when people come to me with the potential my spouse is cheating on me the first thing i remind them it, it first and foremost it's a no fault state okay so whatever video i get is it going to help you gain any more alimony or anything of that nature. The only time it, besides your gut wanting right. to know what's going on, be, the only thing it really can help is if you want custody of your children and you're significant or soon to be ex significant, <laughs> when they have the children is drinking and driving right. or making out with their new lover on the beach while your kids are four years old swimming uh, and not being supervised, then that can help you. But by the same token, if somebody really wants to know what's going on and I feel that they're a calm, cool, collective person and isn't going to go off the deep end when we show them the video, we'll take the case. But because it's such a, a passionate thing, I've seen it when I've had clients before. You let them know what's going on. Hey, he's now at the Radisson Inn with you know, the secretary from the office that you suspected. 20 minutes later, my investigator is going, did you update the client? Because she's here, I right, <laughs> throwing water in his face and shaving cream all over his car. It, it's happened. So we're very careful on those type of cases, how we qualify people. Because when you come to me as, your, as the client, I don't right. want you getting an assault charge on your ex, you know. So uh, I'd say I'd probably take one in every 20 that come our wow. way. But I will, if you're really still into it, I want to do it. I, will, I have plenty of investigator people that I will – you know, push you in that direction, but it's a, uh, you know, people see it on TV a lot, the cheater show, yeah, yeah. and that's they think, hey, that's what you guys do, but uh, that's a small part of our business. So, are people gathering information to go to court, or they're gathering information for getting even? A lot of it's getting even. Okay. It really is. A lot <laughs> of it is getting even because, again, your divorce attorney is going to tell you it's a no fault state. So. Unless it's, again, for the alimony per, or for the child custody issue, mm-hmm. that's really only time the surveillance is going to be a, of an, an issue right. for you in that sense. So, 
All right. So it's more of a, if you have a suspicion to confirm or deny what you might be thinking. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it mm -hmm. gives you that peace of mind at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, of course, if you walk in and you physically catch him in the act, we don't need to hire then you. Then you don't services. need me. Exactly. That's for sure. <laughs> it, it, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. All right. So now you would mention the hospital sweep, which I think that is brilliant. I, I've mm -hmm. actually never even thought about that. I mean, that is, and I have heard of people doing that. Uh, what you're talking about, getting hurt, you know, late Friday evening or something like that, going out to the bar, you know, they're laid up for the weekend and they're sitting there thinking, man, how do, how can I, you know, how, how can I, uh, you know, how get can them? I pass the cost yeah, of exactly, this injury yeah. onto someone yeah, else? You go. <laughs> That's, That's what they're thinking. Exactly yeah. it. You know, how, how can I still be, because, you know, it's been great sitting home Saturday and Sunday on my butt all day. And, <laughs> you know, maybe I can get my boss to pay me while I sit home on workers comp. So yeah, I, you see that happen. I can just imagine now, um, how often should an employer do these checks? Let's start with the driver's license check. Um, how That's often? That's a great question. That's a great question. When you're having employees out driving your trucks or your cars with your name all over it and you're high profile, even if you're not high profile, again, it, it, it's, it's your asset, it, it's your liability. I say at least every year, um, maybe even six months, depending, mm -hmm. you might have a suspicion that this guy got a DUI in his own time, you might want to call me and let's take a look at it, so you can get that out in the open. Yeah, I mean, and deal I, would, with it. I mean, as, as much as these people are driving, especially for like air conditioning contractors, mm -hmm. I mean, I would think every six months this way. I mean, because you imagine going yeah. a whole year and finding out yeah. a month after you pulled it that this guy gets a DUI and he's been driving. Um, I mean, at the, you know, if you're if you're a good enough company, heck, you do it once a month. <laughs> yeah, and let me just say something too, because a lot of times people they balk at the price. And I have a lot of clients that I work with that do rerun background checks, whether okay. it's the DL portion right. or, the, or the criminal. What's history. the cost for a DL for a driver's license one? For us, I run it. If you just do the straight, the first time I do it, I do it for twenty five dollars. Okay. And they're squawking at that. Well, a lot of times we do that on top of the criminal check right. and the workers' okay. comp, and, but that'll come down on that. I'll bundle it depending yeah. on what they need. But I always come back on reruns about half the price for them when they rerun. After they do the initial, I'll do it. Let's say they oh, do the initial. That's, that's a drop in the bucket compared to oh, what the cost could yeah. be if somebody gets a DUI and is driving. Once again, ounce of prevention worth the pound. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking if you want to keep working here, you get it and bring me the proof. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that idea hey, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it could call, you're saying just, it's just for the driver's license. If somebody wanted to have that pulled every month, 15, 20 bucks? Yeah, I would employee. do that for that. Mm -hmm. And if they gave you uh, multiple employees, would you reduce it? Certainly. Volume... Okay. I can go back to my database and say we're going to do a lot of volume and they'll nice. cut me a little bit of a deal. Nice. Definitely. And like I'm, I said before, I have a uh, – just for an average, let's say you come in and do the original background check with all the bundles, the, the workers' yeah. comp, the criminal, the driver's license. Of course, we always run a national s sex offender and a couple other little things to make sure we know who you are who you are, the social security number check, make sure it matches up. Say we do that originally at 50 the first time you do a new hire – but you're mainly concerned with the the DL portion. And I'll work with you and say, well, right. we'll we can do that for fifteen nice. twenty. Again, I think that's a smart yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can afford it and put it into your cost of of business, especially as much as these people drive and as much drinking is going mm -hmm. on and as many DUIs as there are, boy, I tell you, I mean, it's 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 not as bad as some of the other things that could happen. But the car, they, they're driving, drinking on the job. I mean, these guys are drinking up in the attics. They're drink, mm -hmm. and then they get into an accident and they kill somebody. <laughs> that million dollar claim that you said was average. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna skyrocket. That, that, that's the first day. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So you know, for fifteen twenty bucks versus a million, hey, I'd play those odds in mm -hmm. Vegas all day definitely. long, all day long. And now the background check. How often do you think the background check should be done? On the on the criminal portion. You know, if you're hiring a bunch of customer service reps to sit in their cubicles, I'd do it every couple of years at best. And that's just to protect, to make sure if you have someone that was getting some assault charges, you don't yeah. want them coming in and beating up your other employees. You want to yeah. promote that you have a safe workplace. And again, I think when you do this and redo it and your employees know, it sets a precedent that yeah. not only am I here to make sure I know what's going on, but I'm here to protect you. And the bottom line is we're going to protect our business so we have good clients and the more clients I have the more money right. that I can bring in and, and pay you and give you the benefits that you deserve I'm okay. going to go back to the same example I use a lot the pool cleaner the service technician that's going to come out and work on your AC guys that are in homes 
once a week or once every few months, you want to look at them once a year because if now they were all clean and now all of a sudden they get into something where unfortunately they get into painkillers yeah. and they get addicted and now they're breaking Bath in. salts. Bath salts, <laughs> yes. Now, yeah, now they're going to start. Uh, but, you know, if they get into something and all of a sudden now they're committing burglaries and robberies, they could potentially go, oh, I've been cleaning the Smith's pool and they're out of town and I like that LCD. And I know how to get back in here late at night because I got the gate code. Those you definitely want to be looking at, again, once a year. And I think it's a good tool that, and once we get the correct answer, can, what the what your p client can see or can't right. see. But I, I would feel safe if you're going to come to my house and build a pool. I've got two little children, as we, we spoke about earlier. I don't want any convicted felons in my backyard or any sex offenders in Absolutely. my backyard, obviously. So, again, I think in that type of industry where you're doing service or someone's at your house, you're sending people out to the homes a lot, at least once a year. And again, same thing. I'll rerun those at a reduced price. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's really, really smart to do. Um, now, after, after a worker's compensation claim is hit, and we've only got a couple minutes mm -hmm. left, uh, uh, somebody's filed it, they've gone through the processes. Are there any, is there anything after that that the business owner can do to either help protect themselves further from that claim or down the road? Yeah, we kind of spoke on it earlier. I think first and foremost, be in contact with your adjuster, your okay. claims manager, whatever titles they have through your carrier. And just, again, be aware, do we get a statement taken right away? And sometimes you'll know because they're going to call you as a small business owner. You're going to know that the guy's going to come in your yeah. office and take it. But a lot of times if you're a bigger business owner, and you're trusting your HR department, make sure your HR department is with the claims manager. Do we get the statement right away? Do we get all the witnesses? Right. Because the longer you let that go, especially if it's a subbed out, you know, if you're using right. subs on the job or something where they're, they move away, right. you, you might be hard to track the witnesses. Yeah. And again, it's fresh in your mind. If you do it within 72 hours, it's going to be fresh yeah. in everyone's mind. And that's what's smart about, you know, even the smallest injury you should document, mm -hmm. correct? Definitely. Even the smallest, because you never know. CYA, as we, yeah. have, as we never know. Mm -hmm. You know, having that paperwork there, just covering yourself, mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen. It only takes you a few minutes of time to do that. And, and then the other thing I know we were talking about is uh, it, sometimes it may be even better to try to put that person, keep the person employed doing something in your business mm -hmm. that doesn't take away from their injury or add right. to the injury but still keeps it versus filing a worker's comp claim. Yeah. And then you can see what they're doing. At least you know yeah. they're showing up to work and they're not out fishing or surfing yeah. on your dime. Absolutely. You know? And it'd probably be cheaper than the worker's comp claim. Definitely. For paying them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's been a great show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking with Doug Smith <clears throat> from Janus Investigation. Doug, what's the phone number that we can get in contact with you? Yes, it's 888-871-9590 or locally 772-349-4772. All right, let's say that one more time. You can also go to JanicePI.com. But what's That's that correct. number again? The 800 is 888-871-9590. Okay. 9590 and locally 772-349-4772. Awesome. Well, appreciate you being on the hey, show. Hey, thanks Doug. for having me. It was, it was awesome. awesome. It was if you time. have any questions, you can watch the recording of the show after we log off the air here. You'll be able to watch it again and again and again if you want to get some more information. But we'll be back next Friday at 11.05. I'm Tom with Doug. You're listening to Country.